Everybody says, why do you call yourself a tamalera? Because that's what I am. La mera mera. Okay, everybody grab, their, everybody grab their spoon or their knife or whatever, and we're gonna follow, um, we're gonna go all around the pot. So come on, Carmen, you get behind her, and come on, Rosie. Now, bless the pot. Bing, yes, bing. Okay, there you go. Estábamos contentos, pues contentos hasta el fin. Se fue, se fue, alejándose de mi alma. And with that, this pot is going to bring forth the best tamales ever made by the almost tamera. It's a tamalera, not tamera. So the day of the tamalada, early in the morning, I would go to the molino and buy the masa there. And so you can buy it already prepared, which means it has the chile and the lard in it and so forth. Or you bring it home and have to mix it yourself. Oh, it's nice and warm. Yeah, it's nice and warm. And by me mixing it, I mean beating it. You're making, just think of corn that has been processed and ground, and then you're putting liquid in it to make it pliable again, and also add the lard to it to make the masa a masa. And so it does take preparation for a couple of days to do that, to do the tamales. I prepare the meat ahead of time, cook it ahead of time, chop it up and freeze it. So it's labor intensive for the person putting the ingredients together. No matter who they are, what they can do, what they can't do, everyone finds a role and a place in a tamalada. Thank you. Is, is this it? That's it. That's the. Uh, oh my goodness! 1995. Here's an insert. Okay, this is it. Yes. You get you, you get yes. the corn husk, Got right, it. Erica? What side? The side that curves like this, right? It makes a little cup. A tamalada is a party. It's a group of people that come together to enjoy a making a tamales. A knife, some people use a spoon. A spoon. <laughs> I think the most essential ingredient are friends and family. You, you spread the masa on just, I need a spoon. not the whole thing, because then you put the meat on one side like this. And, and willing hands. So you can't do a laborious task of making tamales without the right people there. Wow, when we walk down memory lane on that one. Hi! Look who's coming! Oh my gosh! Hi, kiddo! How are you? Oh, how lovely! How wonderful is that? Melanie, ya llegaste, que bonita, que linda. I greet everybody. They select an apron because you have to have an apron. Not only is it labor, you know, intensive, but it's also kind of a messy thing. Everybody get an apron, put an apron on, and then I have a rule. Everybody has to put on their dangly earrings or come with their dangly earrings. But does everybody have their earrings? Yes. And their lipstick, or as my tia Hope would say, a lipstick. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Because she always, she's the one I learned from that said, honor your food, and my mother also. She makes it a, a, a ceremony. <laughs> she just makes it so much fun and so much more special than just an ordinary tamale making event. I use a knife, so, and then 
We'll do the masa, we'll embarrar. So we'll just place all the ones we're making, like right here, we'll fill this up, and then we'll put the, the, the meat on it, okay? First time I was making them on my own, and uh, so I put them all in the pot and cooked them and everything. And I go to open it up, and I place the tamales all upside down. Oh no! All the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? And we would make the tamales while um, the husbands would go watch the game in the, <laughs> in the den. And um, we would sit together and we would tell stories. Mm -hmm. And we would we would talk and I would learn about my family when they were young. And Yayu would tell me about stuff. And of course I'd hear a couple of the same stories every <laughs> single year about how, oh, how I was so cute when I did this when I was On this side, or does it matter? Oh my goodness, all kinds of photographs here. I probably will shed a few tears, because there's a bunch of people I see already that have died. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that food is what, I guess, looking at all of this, that the bringing of people together was always because of food, of making food and learning about food. Because the reason I started doing the tamaladas is because I didn't know much about making tamales until I, I started, I embarked on that. So it all became, when it became part of my, my repertoire. I loved it and for me, it was not, I didn't consider it just plain food for, everyday food, it was also celebratory food. I'm gonna cry. Very nice. <laughs> we never stop <clears throat> to give thanks or to even remember all these people. Because each one of those I can go back and I can, I can attribute some characteristic, some very direct impact that they had on me. They became part of the teaching that I did hear you to say. Growing up, I was not real crazy about learning other customs, you know. I just didn't, our customs, I didn't. And so it was, fascinating to meet Ellen and have her say, don't you do this? Don't you, don't you cook this? Don't you do that? And, and so she's taught me so many things. It's really incredible how my life has changed and how I respect the things that I didn't respect a whole lot before. Everybody stop, because remember the first pot is the signature one, because it's going to tell us how they are. Where the metal thing is, put it on top where the metal thing is right there. Put the penny in. Okay. Time roll. <laughs> All right. I can teach you about making tamales. I can teach you the why it's important to learn about tamales. But I can also say that with great pride because I did not learn all of this in a book. I learned it from the community. Okay. Good dog. Attention. Stop. Oh, you don't have to get up. Okay. The steam's coming up. Okay, that's a good one. A good indicator. We take off the... Put it down over here. And we'll pull out. I'm going to take one from the middle, okay? All right. And that's the one, because those are probably the ones that are not cooked. Here it comes. Ooh. All right. Oh, it rolled up Ooh. really nice. Woo! Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, who's older than 82? <laughs> <laughs> so that means yo soy la mera mera tamadera. I will take the first bite. Yes. 
I want to take the first bite. It smells great. The masa's cooked. I credit her with really giving me an appreciation of my culture, which, you know, really, I grew up at a time when we weren't allowed to speak Spanish in school. Uh, really, I felt robbed of my culture, and then I had this explosion of associating with these women, in particular, Ellen, that really taught me about tra the traditions and the history, and it just made me really be so proud. And so it's not steak and it's not lobster, but all of a sudden you've created, you've created this little package that has an incredible taste of all of those things blended together. So you have to honor it. No, no that's just enough to start with. Okay. Pick your place. We got coffee and we're all going to try the tamales now, okay? That's really what she's taught me the most of, is how to, how to just love yourself and be yourself. What she's taught me is to learn to appreciate who I am and not to worry about what anybody else is. My academic journey has been the process to learn about who I am and how I can now say, yo soy. Yo soy Mexico-Americana, I'm a Chicana, and I'm a Latina. Solo pienso en ti. With pride because I know how I am defining myself. Defining myself with, with knowledge and fact and so forth and with things that make me proud. This is who I am.